Hello, you're watching Armando Hasurungan Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Visit Facebook Armando Hasurungan, like, ask questions, answer questions, and please post some interesting things, including some artworks, please. So, carrying on from the previous video, we learned how acetyl CoA was transported from the mitochondria into the cytosol. And fatty acid synthesis, which is the discussion of this video, occurs in the cytosol and begins with acetyl CoA. And that is why acetyl-CoA was transported out of the mitochondria from the mitochondrial matrix here into the cytosol. So this is really a quick overview before looking at the actual metabolism map. So acetyl-CoA essentially will become malonyl-CoA, either malonyl-CoA, or it will become acetyl-ACP. Now ACP stands for acyl carrier protein, and this protein helps in the synthesis of fatty acids which means that malonyl-CoA also will bind to an acyl carrier protein, ACP, becoming malonyl-ACP. Now both then, malonyl-ACP and acetyl-ACP, then uh, join together, uh, join to only one ACP, forming what's called acetoacyl-ACP. And this is a mistake, this is not meant to be acetoacetate ACP, it's aceto um, acyl ACP, also known as beta keto acyl ACP, also known as beta keto butyl ACP, uh, and this is done through a condensation reaction. It got it's got many names, but anyways, beta keto acyl ACP then after condensation has three other reactions which we won't look into now, um, but it's reduction, then dehydration, then it's reduction again before forming acyl ACP. Now this acyl ACP is only short fatty acid ACP which then leaves the acyl carrier protein and binds to CoA group to form acyl-CoA. And acyl-CoA is still a short fatty acid chain, um, but by adding carbons and hydrogen with a specific enzyme, it can become a long fatty acid. And also the CoA has to be removed. But back to the map. So fatty acid synthesis begins when acyl-CoA, um, this acyl-CoA which is in the cytosol now, it begins with acyl-CoA when it uh, it can either convert to so acetyl CoA can either either convert to um, acetyl ACP or malonyl CoA. Now acetyl ACP is acetyl CoA without the CoA. The CoA is exchanged with ACP. And ACP, as we have learned, is acyl carrier protein. Um, and acyl CoA converts to acetyl ACP by transacetylase, a transacylase. My sorry. Um, acyl CoA can also convert to malonyl CoA by a two-step process by this crazy-looking enzyme, um, and it's biotin carboxylase. Hold up, it's biotin carboxylase and transcarboxylase. So it's a pretty big enzyme, this one. Um, the ACP is added and the CoA is. Yeah, so the CoA, the. Okay, anyway. Um, then malonyl CoA converts to malonyl ACP. And with the same enzyme, specific for malonyl, called malonyl transacylase, the ACP is added and the CoA is removed to form malonyl ACP. Now malonyl ACP and acetyl ACP will then combine together to form a beta keto acyl ACP. And as we've mentioned, there's actually a lot of names for all these things, but I'm just going to keep the acyl ACP in it. So malonyl ACP and acetyl ACP will then combine together to form beta keto acyl ACP. And this is by the enzyme beta keto acyl uh, synthetase. One ACP was removed and also carbon dioxide group was removed and this is a condensation reaction. And interestingly enough, the two carbon addition from malonyl uh, and acetyl ACP to form acyl ACP is a four-step reaction process as we've discussed, condensation, reduction, dehydration and reduction. So we have looked at condensation already. The next one is reduction. beta keto acyl ACP is then reduced to form beta hydroxy acyl ACP by the enzyme beta keto acyl reductase. NADH, NADPH is oxidized to NADP. 
beta-hydroxyacyl ACP will then be dehydrated, which is the third step, remember, to trans 2 acyl, to trans 2 enol acyl ACP by the enzyme beta-hydroxyacyl ACP dehydratase. De dehydratase? Okay. Um, yeah. Now, now, next, this trans 2 enol ACP will then be reduced, which is the final step, again, to form acyl ACP. So NADPH is oxidized to NADP because trans 2 enol ACP was reduced. So that means that NADPH is oxidized to NADP. And this is done by the enzyme enol ACP reductase. So we have just talked about how from malonyl ACP and acetyl ACP, it was condensation, reduction, dehydration, and reduction again. Now, acyl ACP can then switch the ACP with CoA. So the acyl carrier protein is released and the CoA is added to form acyl CoA. Now this acyl CoA is obviously a still very short acyl CoA, which means that it will make a short fatty acid when the CoA is removed. Um, but the short acyl ACP can, can become a longer chain, can have a longer fatty acid chain through the addition of carbons, carbons and hydrogens um, through the enzyme uh, fatty uh, acid synthase. So fatty acid th synthase adds and makes this acyl group long too, yeah. And then the fatty acid synthase can then also remove the CoA to form the actual fatty acid group without the CoA. Because fatty acids are acetyl CoAs without the CoA group attached. I hope that made sense. Uh, please comment, like, and subscribe. So after this, we'll look at how fatty acid degradation works, but first we need to know how fatty acid actually moves into the matrix, because Fatty acid degradation occurs within the matrix. Fatty acid synthesis occurs out of the matrix. Thank you.